Do the Isaacs sing gospel, country, folk, or bluegrass? Well, the answer is probably all of the above. The family matriarch jokingly calls it Jewgrass, but Lily Isaacs is simply hinting at her heritage. German born Jew via New York City, now sitting in the hills of Tennessee. Wow. <laughs> I mean, is that. What else is there? I was born in Munich. München. München. Right. Yes, sir. Parents had an, an incredible odyssey because they ended up in concentration camp. Yes. Yes, my parents are Polish born in a town called Częstochow. And when World War II broke out, they, along with all their families, were taken first to the ghettos in Poland and then transported to Germany. And they spent five years like that. They were liberated, liberated from Belsenbarger. Lily's parents suffered atrocities that make it a miracle she's even here today. They separated my mother from her friend Sabrina and said, Mom, told my mom, said, you go here and you go there. Well, my mother's friend grabbed her by the hand and said, she's coming with me, and pulled her out of that line, which normally they would have been shot immediately, but somehow she got through. Later on, she found out that the line that she was to go to was for the gas chambers. And simply because it happened to my parents, and I never knew my grandparents who were all killed before I even knew them, I taught my children and I teach my grandchildren never to forget what happened. Young Lily Isaacs came to New York City with her parents and dreamed of performing in the Jewish theater. Along the way, Lily formed a duo with a fellow actress named Maria and cut a folk album for Columbia Records. We uh, started performing in a little coffee house called uh, Gertie's Folk City in Greenwich Village, New York. There was another act called the Greenbrier Boys, and they were from Kentucky. I never heard that kind of music before. That's when I met Joe. We dated a couple of years and got married in 1970. A oh, Jewish yeah. girl and a Kentucky guy? Yes, whose father was a preacher. <laughs> yes. Talk about a clash of cultures. Clash of cultures. I mean, was that a big problem in your marriage? I well, mean, did you to try to, you know, I don't know what you do with that. <laughs> Actually, when we married, we were in love and mm. we were blinded to anything else that was around us. And we didn't think it was an obstacle. Of course, at the time, he was not a Christian. And I was nothing. I mean, I was raised Jewish, but I was practically an agnostic. I didn't know what I believed. I just knew I was a Jewish kid from the Bronx. When Joe Isaac's older brother was killed in a car accident, the life of this Jewish kid would be forever changed. Her in-laws gathered for a memorial service. And I didn't want to go, because Jewish people don't go to church. I'd never been to church in my life. And I really was offended by that invitation, but I thought, well, I'll go just to be a devoted wife and for the family's sake. And I sat in the very last pew because I was ashamed to be there because it was so far, it was just against my grain to be there. And I sat there just watching everyone and listening to the music and trying to enjoy myself, but the Spirit of God was so real there, and I'd never felt that before. I felt a feeling of peace for the first time in my life. I got down on my knees at that little wooden pew in that little church, and I didn't know the words to say because I didn't know I was lost. I couldn't ask God to forgive me of my sins. I didn't know I was a sinner. But that night when I knelt, I cried and I cried, and I cried my way through to the Lord. I didn't know how to talk, I didn't know what to say, but I'm glad that God understands my tears, and He does even today. And He saw the depths of my heart that night that I was searching for something, and that's when He met me. Well, Jesus, for a Jewish person? No. His name is a hang-up for her. I could say God, and I could say Lord, but uh, when it came to say Jesus, it offended me. And I would close my eyes and I would see my mother and my father who had tried so hard to make a life for us. And I wanted to bring them naches, which is a Jewish word for joy, pleasure, mm. in, their, in their lifetime. And all I could see was them shaking a finger at me because I was praying to Jesus. Word got back to my family in New York that I'd fallen off the deep end. My mother called me on the phone once at my job and uh, she said, Lily, we heard about you going to church, and we want you to know that we're very ashamed of this, and we won't approve, and if you don't give up that crazy religion, 
this Jesus stuff. You can forget about ever coming home again. Your father and I don't ever want to see you again. And my father told me that he'd rather see me walking the streets or dead and buried in the grave than to be a reproach to my family. And at that point in my life, I really, I thought, well, these are the parents that I wanted to bring joy to. And suddenly they've rejected me and all I did was accepted Jesus into my heart. So I had to answer them. I had a choice to make and I told them that I loved them and I didn't want to lose what I'd found in the Lord. And at that point, when I went to the altar, it was easy to say Jesus because it was all that I had left. And that's when we started singing together in church and God became our strength. Lily's family went on to win Dove Awards, chart number one songs, and play the Grand Old Opry. But all the while, she struggled to find peace with her own beloved parents. It's been hard. There have been times when I've wanted to really witness to them. We've come very close, but it's not all together, you know, been completely fulfilling yet. And another great difficulty for you was your husband. Yes. Uh, how many years of marriage? 28 years. 28 and? years of marriage. And we're divorced. Wow. We're divorced in 98. It was very difficult for both of us, but you move on. Mm -hmm. And uh, my life has been so rich with the Lord, and I'm so thankful that uh, you can survive after catastrophe when you lean on the Lord. There may be Jews watching this now. How do you speak to that? What, what's your heart on that? I've had Jewish people come to me and ask me, how do I do this? I, I, I don't want to change the fact that I'm Jewish. When I found Jesus, Yeshua, as my personal Savior, Messiah, when I realized that I did not have to change a thing about who I was, my heart automatically changed when I fell in love with Yeshua because his spirit came in and took abode within my heart. And I looked at the world so differently. My prayer is that if there is someone out there that doesn't know about Jesus, all you have to do is give him your heart the way I did. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know the words to say, but I knelt and I said, God, whatever this is that I'm feeling, teach me, show me, help me to understand what it is. And that's all a person has to do. And it just all unfolds before your eyes, before your spirit. And I know that there probably are people out there that don't understand, but they don't have to understand. All you have to do is give your heart.